They're building a new experiment. It won't be ready till 2005, and it's on an epic scale. It makes current particle physics look like child's play. But it's got a very grown-up name, the Large Hadron Collider. I think it's probably the biggest scientific instrument ever constructed. And it's going to collide protons head-on at the highest energies that have ever been achieved. And the idea is by colliding them with much higher energy than previously, we can smash them apart into much smaller pieces and get down to a deeper level of our understanding of the structure of matter. By colliding the particles together at very high energy, you are recreating for a brief moment, in a very small volume, the sort of energy or temperature that was present in the real universe within a millionth of a millionth of a second of the original Big Bang. Subatomic particles will be fired around a 27 kilometer ring and then smashed into each other at almost the speed of light. Huge detectors, which act like enormous electronic eyes, will capture the results of the collision. While the existing tunnel can be reused, for the new experiment, the detectors will have to be bigger and better than anything ever built before. Uh, one of the two detectors on the Large Hadron Collider is going to have a diameter which is uh, about twice as big and a length which is about three times as big. So in volume terms, it'll be uh, six to ten times the volume of these detectors. The data from one of these four big detectors in one year uh, will be about a petabyte of data. What the hell's that? If you stored it on CD-ROM, and each CD-ROM is about sort of this thick, and then you stack them up, they'll be three kilometers high, one year's worth of data. So just storing that, transmitting it, analyzing is going to be a big challenge. The energy of a proton of the LHC is about the energy, the kinetic energy, energy of motion of a mosquito buzz, buzzing around. Now that doesn't seem very much, but you've got to uh, remember that a mosquito has in it something like um, a thousand billion billion protons. So it's as if the mosquito, which is made of these thousand billion billion protons, its energy was suddenly concentrated on one of them. So it's a huge amount of energy. What's been going on at CERN in the last several years is smashing the particles together at higher and higher energies, creating higher and higher temperatures. Temperatures that are the equivalent of millions of millions of degrees, far hotter than anything in the universe today. Hotter than anything that has existed since the first millionth of a second. Now, it might be surprising if I say, and those temperatures are actually extremely cold compared to where we want to go to next, where we think that something interesting happens. In a sense, all that we have done so far at CERN is seen the universe when it was frozen like this. What we want to do next is to be able to melt the universe, if you like, turn the ice into real water. And what happens when the universe melts? The holy grail for particle physicists, and the reason they're spending billions on this experiment, is to try to answer a simple but profound question. Where does mass come from? A question you might have thought they'd have figured out by now. One particular thing we're looking for is something called the Higgs boson, which is associated with the mechanism by which particles acquire mass. We're in a very peculiar position that we, we know a lot of so-called elementary particles. We can organize them into certain families. The, as we go deeper, the structure seems to be becoming simpler. But they have a very diverse range of masses. Some are very light, even massless. Some are heavier. And we don't understand the mechanism by which they get different masses. We have on paper theories of how particles get mass, and they predict the existence of new particles called Higgs bosons, or, uh, but we've never found one. Uh, we're pretty sure it exists, but it's a generic idea. It could take different forms, and it's a roadblock, actually, to understanding more deeply the structure of matter is to try to find out this Higgs boson or bosons and, and what it or they are and how they operate. It will unblock progress. I mean, we know something is hiding the fact that um, 
all particles are trying to be massless and generating mass for some but not others. And until we know the answer to that, we, we can't get deeper into the structure of things. If they discover the Higgs boson, it will be one of the most exciting scientific developments of the new millennium. But what if they don't find it? Whether there will be a Higgs particle or something more subtle along the same lines is not yet known. But if nothing at all showed up, then that might be even more interesting in a paradoxical sense, because it would say that there is something fundamentally flawed somewhere in our present understanding of either relativity or quantum theory, the other great, quote, laws, as we believe them to be. So it would be a signal that there is something missing, and exactly whether that would be a profound re-evaluation of all of science, or whether it would be a small thing somewhere to be cooked up, who knows. Scientists have theories for the secrets they'll discover inside atomic particles, although they can't be sure what's there. But whatever they do discover, scientists assume that the laws of conservation will still work, even at the smallest scale. Certainly, when one gets the results and one analyzes the results, there are conservation laws which must be strictly satisfied. So when one says one gets the results right, these are the basic things which must be right. So we could not have something happening which is violating one of the cherished conservation laws. Every law has to be continuously tested and uh, try out the domain of validity. And sometimes we find, ah, oh, it was only approximate, it works here. But when we really push things to very extreme energies or very extreme temperatures, the law doesn't work anymore. So I think I would be very surprised if energy and momentum conservation changed, but it's possible. Yeah.